Hello everybody, Alan Taylor from Lawrence, Kansas for WVMetroNews.com where the West Virginia Mountaineers have defeated Kansas 49 to nothing, putting to bed the bad memories of 2013 and maintaining hope for a strong finish to 2015. That makes three straight wins for the Mountaineers. This one handled in dominant fashion. It was over almost from the outset. West Virginia putting up 42 points in the first half, nearly matched their season scoring high of 45 achieved against Maryland back during the non-conference schedule. Now let's roll tape and see how 49-0 unfolded. Now the Jayhawks don't get many explosive plays, but Trey Parmalee makes one here, and then Terrell Chestnut erases it. After the strip, Jared Harper makes the recovery, West Virginia in business. Now five plays later, Russell Schell scores with minimal resistance said he came around the corner and wondered to himself, quote, is it supposed to be this wide open? That's a question he could have asked himself several times on Saturday. But you know what's not wide open? This pass. And Chestnut again was on point. Takes back the interception 32 yards, and it's 14-0 less than four minutes into the game. And for you kids at home, this proves why you should always read those scouting reports. Uh, honestly, we was in cover three, but I knew I had only had one receiver to my side, so I was able to play him a little bit more aggressively, knowing that I had somebody that's dropped to the flat to help me out in case I needed anything. So I was able to sit on the routes. He ran the curls. We see that they like to run curls to the boundary. You know, 95% of their pass equals the boundary, so I was able to sit there and, and then jump. More first quarter action, more big holes for West Virginia. Another one for Shell. Seriously, that is too easy. Shell had 108 yards on Saturday and he was only West Virginia's third leading rusher. Tremendous day for the offensive line despite playing most of the game without injured left guard Adam Pankey. Wendell Smallwood certainly liked the offensive line's work. He squirts through for the 24-yard touchdown. Smallwood ripped off 115 yards in all, but wait, because he was only West Virginia's second leading rusher. Because... Skylar Howard. He likes that soft middle too ran for a career best 129 yards. Things are going pretty swell when your quarterback averages 14 yards per carry. And that swell running game, it leads to wide open plays in the pass game. You cannot ignore Cody Clay. Two catches, two touchdowns this season for the tight end. Still in the first half, West Virginia pouring it on. Kansas fooled by the inside fake and Howard goes a hunting for the goal line. He played with a sore right hand, not that it matters. West Virginia put up 42 in the first half. Their high for a game this season, remember, had only been 45 against Maryland. Now KU had the nation's 121st ranked run defense coming in at 255 per game. Well, they're going to drop even further because West Virginia ran for 434. So how often does West Virginia have three 100-yard rushers in one game? Well, it's only happened four times and none since 1969 when Pete Wood, Jim Braxton, and Bob Gresham did it versus Cincinnati. That 69 team was 10 and one, won the Peach Bowl. This year's team can't win 10 games, but it is going bowling. And it also has two shutouts because even the backups refuse to yield. Rasul Douglas making his first interception and doing so with a high degree of difficulty. It's been a rough year for the Juco transfer, but he's making strides, should be a starter in 2016. Another second teamer doing work was Nana Kyram. His interception became the fourth takeaway for the West Virginia defense, which allowed only 221 yards. The second team offense didn't score, but redshirt freshman Ricky Rogers made his first two catches, including this one for 45 yards. All of them yak. And West Virginia goes on to enjoy its largest margin of victory in four Big 12 seasons, a no-doubter from the outset. And, you know, Coach did a great job all week of telling the guys, hey, the atmosphere is not going to be real good. You know, we're going to have to create our own energy. And, and, you know, it started early in the week and it lasted all the way through today. So very proud of the way the kids responded. I, I thought that uh, we did an excellent job. We were ready to go at 6.20, 6.30 this morning. We had everybody in their seat and the meeting didn't start till 6.45. So, you know, they were excited to come out and play and, and you know, redeem ourselves from two years ago here. This one went exactly according to script for West Virginia. The offense did pretty much whatever it wanted. The defense manhandled the Jayhawks at the line of scrimmage. Yes, it was Kansas, clearly the worst team in the Big 12, probably the worst team in all of Division I,
but give the Mountaineers credit for going on the road and doing what you're supposed to do against a team like this. Next week, Iowa State comes to Mountaineer Field for Senior Day. West Virginia already bowl eligible with six wins, but looking to improve its positioning in the Big 12 pecking order. So that's a wrap from Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas. Headed back to Morgantown now to start breaking down film in time for the Monday morning stock report. We'll hope you'll keep it logged on here at WVMetroNews.com.